Episode 209 of the Outdoor Biz Podcast with Nico Sanceri and Ben King from the Bear Fist Alliance and Burritos, Breaks, and Flies Podcast, brought to you by Liberty Lake Design Works. When I'm looking for an innovative marketing approach, packaging design, catalog, and web development, I call outdoor industry veteran Marty Heaster at Liberty Lake Design Works. Marty has gathered a team of experienced outdoor industry freelancers providing expertise across a broad range of marketing services. Visit Liberty Lake Design Works to discover how collaborating today's technologies with talented teams delivers brand success. I believe achieving success in the outdoor biz is dependent upon embracing the outdoor lifestyle and learning from outdoor leaders that came before you. If you agree, then listen up for tips, advice, and hacks about growing or starting your career in the outdoor biz. My name is Rick Says. Welcome to the Outdoor Biz Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Outdoor Biz Podcast. I'm talking with Nico Sanceri and Ben King of the Bearfish Alliance, fellow podcasters and fellow fly fishers. Bearfish believes that by enabling multi-level stewardship via unified communication channels, it is possible to preserve the integrity, legacy, and future of the Truckee River as a wild rainbow and brown trout fishery for the community to enjoy in generations to come. Welcome to the show, guys. Look forward to learning more about uh, Bearfish. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Good to, we got to get on the river one of these days and fish, though, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you're, you're in one of my favorite places. Absolutely. Fishing. I think that is incredible. One of my favorite drives is the 395 from up here in the Sierra Nevada down to Southern California. And uh, this ship is it's gorgeous there. I I'm, I love the fish down there. Yeah, it's nice. So, how did you guys meet? How did you guys come together and start this whole thing? Have you been friends for a long time, or you're up in Reno, obviously, right? Yeah. So I I met Ben. I uh, we were both coworkers for what, about a year or so. Yeah. Um, at a, at a little at a little tech company, and uh, Ben was already working there. I kind of came in and filled this other sales seat. He was. Um, the other junior slash senior, the senior junior sales guy. <laughs> guy. And, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, we were both um, the youngest guys there. And which is kind of funny because we're both in our early forties. So wow. hmm. um, yeah, it was interesting. It was, it was an old school tech company, but you know, uh, Ben actually was, and has been a, he's a lifelong and he'll tell you more about this. He's a lifelong surfer. And he kind of had that itch to get back in the water. And I said, well, hey, I'm, I love to fly fish. Why don't, we, why don't we go to the water and see what you think? And ever since then, we've had, a, I think, a pretty awesome, you know, you know friendship you cool. know, on the water and out, you know, out of the water. But yeah. yeah, we hit it off right away. And I had always, as somebody moving uh, to this area, I wanted to get in the water and take up fly fishing. And it's kind of a sport where you really benefit by knowing somebody yeah and that's kind of one of the reasons why i really was excited about the podcast because in addition to the intro you know we really see it as a way to get people connected to their outdoor environment and their community yeah and that's through service through meeting other people through knowing what's going on having the different agencies that that have stewardship over the outdoors communicate so it's been really exciting, and, and we just yeah we hit it off. We're um, we pretty much talk every day. Yeah. So how did you <laughs> get introduced funny. to the outdoors, both of you? Uh, ben, let's start with you. How'd you get it? Surfing was your connection to the outdoors. Yeah, I surfed uh, my whole life, um, and that includes surf trips down to Mexico in high school. I I also snowboard, yeah. and then as a kid, my grandpa is a He's a real true outdoors, and, and my dad has the exact same passion. So I grew up camping, and I was in the Boy Scouts, and we did a lot of backpacking, hiking, and I just was connected in so many different ways. It yeah. was pretty easy growing up in Southern California. Yeah, I was going to say, where did you grow up? Southern California? Yeah, Southern California. And, you know, you're, you're surfing some days and then in the afternoon you go snowboard. I know. Yeah. And I grew up in Fontana. I know that very well. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so 
it's a great place to grow up and, and to be connected, even though there's a lot of uh, people around that you're still, I don't know. I just have always had that really strong love for the outdoors my entire life. Cool. Yeah. Nico, how about you? Um, yeah. So not so much on the surf side. I could say I spent a lot of time at probably the same beaches that Ben was surfing while I was attempting to like boogie board. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I don't judge <laughs> riding waves, riding waves. <laughs> but, but I was, I was more, yeah, I was more of an inland kid. I, I grew up in, in San Dimas, California, which if you're from Fontana. Yeah. You know I went to San school Dimas at Cal Poly back. right by San Dimas. Yep. Oh, nice. All I right. did a, yeah, I did yeah. a triathlon at Benelli park years ago. At Benelli. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. So you know where I'm coming from. So I yeah. started fishing probably, about five years old. And from the time I could ride a bike about seven or eight, uh, after school or before school or in summers, I was at Benelli. I was at Pudding Stone. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Small world. That's crazy. Yeah. So I, I kind of, kind of broke into fishing there, Santa Fe reservoir, you know, out there, um, ocean fishing. And then, um, you know, as a young kid, I think I, I took a trip to Lake Powell, Colorado River. That really, that really got me hooked into fishing, and mm-hmm. it just kind of carried on. Um, and then the transition to fly fishing didn't really happen. Oh my gosh, I mean, maybe uh, we're we looking at seven years ago. Oh wow! So pretty you haven't recent. been doing it very long. Okay, pretty, yeah. No, pre- pretty recent, and and it was it was this very river that Ben and I fish on that forced me into it. I mean, I was. I would fish everything but the river. I would go up to the lake, uh-huh. the streams. Yeah. And I was terrified of the river because it was just so, you know, it's just commanding. It's like there's just so much going on. I'm like, I have no clue, yeah. you know, what yeah. to do here. So, yeah. and and that and thus began, you know, the trek in, into into fly fishing, and and that's kind of just a quick backstory. Of, I, I knew how, right how away <laughs> that Nico was legitimate because he passed my test. He had his stuff on him. When the topic came up <laughs> and in surfing, we, we, we always say the boy scout motto, be prepared, especially yeah. when you're balancing a family, you don't know when the opportunity is going to come. That's but right. If you've got your stuff on you at all times. You're, you're prepared. Ready so, to rock and roll. Uh, he took me, yeah, always. he took me into the water and showed me how. And, um, yeah, it just, it instantly filled a, a hole that I didn't know I've had my whole life. I just love. I, I love fly fishing. And so did you guys What's connect on the Truckee? Was the Truckee the first river you fished together? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I'm glad you asked that because it's, it's not, it's a beautiful river, you know, but it's not the ideal river really for someone to start off fly fishing. That's my opinion. It's just. Well, it's funny. I've been, it, it, I've been in and out of Reno and Carson and hanging out with friends up there for years and I've never fished the Truckee. Oh, well, it's, yeah, this thing's intimidating, you know, it's, it's just, a it's, it's, it's a Mecca in its own right. It's, it's a highly unspoken of river. I mean, unless you're from the area regionally, not many people speak of it, but, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I've seen very talented, highly talented, uh, fly fishers come here from, you know, say Western, other West, Western states, you know, traditional Montana, Idaho, Wyoming guys mm-hmm. and they just walk away, you know, like they just, they're done. They just want to throw their <laughs> waders and rod in the river going like, <laughs> you know, like they know they're there. I can see them. And I saw that guy catch one. He's like, I'm throwing everything at wow, it. Wow. So it's pretty tough. You know, huh? Interesting. I had a it's friend a tell me, he said, Ben, if I don't get any fish tonight, I think I'm, I'm done for <laughs> a year or two. I was like, what? Wow. <laughs> you probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Wow. And so, but, but, but go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was say just, just, just to get back to your question. So yeah, I put, th- this is where the, the river that we traditionally fish. And this is, I know where I introduced Ben to the fly fishing and, you know, and, you know, to his credit, you know, he, he, he pays attention, you know, and, uh, he picked up on some things and, you know, within, I would say a month of us going out constantly, you know, he, you know, I, basically kind of take them under my wings. They hear, this is what we do. This is how we do it. This is where we go. This is what to look for. Yeah. And one day he just, he just, he just geared up. Boy Scout, you know, Boy Scout motto, hop in his car, gives me a call. I'm doing it on my own. And wow, then right within on. an hour, he said, sends me a picture, you know, he probably <laughs> was, was that a, a little, 
I forgot what it was, a little rainbow or brown or something, but it was just, yeah. he started getting into them by right himself. On. And I'm like, Dude, that's, that's an accomplishment. That's awesome. So. Yeah, that's awesome. That's rewarding for you too, to have somebody, you know, that you've taken under your wing and then they can go out and do it themselves. That's awesome. Oh, hell, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you don't want them to think that you're full of you know what. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, or they can't do it without you there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> He's a natural guy. I mean, one time we were taking uh, somebody and he had helped them rig up and we were all about to walk down and he looked and he saw that I had a fly that he didn't think would work. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hang on, try this. And I just knew he took the time to get me rigged up the right way. Yep. yep. And I, I just knew, you know, he's a natural guy. Yep, and yep. That's cool. It paid off for me. So tell our listeners about the Bear Fish Alliance. How did you, what inspired you to create that? How did you decide on that? Where did that inspiration come from? Or the idea? So, what, what was the first idea? Yeah. So, you know, it, it kind of came from, number one, you know, being self-taught on the river was, it was an enduring hardship, you know, getting into the sport of fly fishing, you know, cause you, you can go out and see all these people yeah. doing it. You go and see all these YouTube videos and these books, and these people being successful. And, and there's a lot of things to get your head around. Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. And especially like I mentioned already, you know, this river's, it's not easy, you know, and it's, basically through through trial and tribulation, you know, of reaching out to, you know, every fly shop, every angler I came in contact with, just trying to get a little bit of information on the river, mm-hmm. you know, like, Hey, where should I go? What should I use? How should I do this? Hey, could, could I tag along with you? And all of that was, you know, received with either misdirection, misinformation, or it's it just, you know, it puts you in the wrong direction. And I'm like, you know, I know there has to be a way for us to, collectively you know get all this information together to people that want to get into the sport um and then you know maybe they're from out of the area there wasn't there isn't one single collective that you can go to in this region hmm. to, to, to find information on the river Interesting. Um, where's the local and, shop yeah. is it in Re- is it in Truckee? it's our shop in Truckee. uh there's a shop up in Truckee, yeah, yeah but i mean here we have we have we got a couple outlets yeah there's I mean, a couple shops in reno yeah yeah i know a couple yeah 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 there's a couple there's a couple local outlets you know and and then chain outlets too you right. know but um uh you know they, they they'll give you good information but you know I, how do i put it nicely they're selling the stuff they're not always on the river they, they do get information <laughs> from guys out on the river but yeah is that the most trustworthy source you know <laughs> you know people are very, right, protect- right. very people are very protective of their of their sources and 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 the part two was um you know, there's quite a few groups that, that work on this river, you know, that have a stake on this river. Hmm. Um, and I'm going to shield us here one second. Here. We got a, we got a Union Pacific headed towards us. So okay. we're that ben, ben and I are in scenic Verdi, California, looking out the window with the river next to us, looking up at the Sierra. So they put this in the, and I'm in lovely in Bishop, set, California. You know? <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. It That's is. A, yeah. What a mix. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so what I was getting at was, um, uh, you know, you have different groups out here. You got, you got Trout Unlimited. That's got a great, you know, presence out here. Um, Nature Conservancy has done a phenomenal job um, in Nevada on, on the Eastern Truck doing restoration work and a few other groups. But the problem was everyone had like their own little stake on there mm. um, and they have their own communication channels. They do, they do great at what they do, but there was very little or to no in between you know, to help spread the word on their behalf, Gotcha. you know, and, and connect those missing uh, collaboration pieces, hmm. you know, so I'm like, well, maybe we could just step in, you know, and kind of fill that void, you know, in our spare time, like, yeah. hey, here's our, well, we'll call it this, you know, and, and we, we came up with the name Bearfish Alliance, which is kind of like, what the heck is that? That, that gives a nod, uh, it's a historical nod to the Truckee River. So, um, during the time of the settlers and and before then, California grizzly was common in this area, um, which was about bigger than Kodiak bears, um, very large grizzly. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) Um, and, and then the Lahontan cutthroat trout, you saw also run freely um, between Tahoe and Pyramid on the truck, which in most cases were running the same sizes as the, uh, the King salmon, you know, and and whatnot. Huge fish. Yeah. it, It was a, 
Right. So now it, it's the nod to the bear and the fish, but also now we, we just have black bears, you know, and they're not on the river that often. And mm-hmm. our fish, you know, are a little bit smaller. However, the trucking does have the propensity to grow very large, you know, brown and rainbow trout. So hmm. a little switcheroo, it's a bear fish, a bear sized fish. Yeah. So, I like it. <laughs> yeah. I like it. That's cool. Yeah. And so tell yeah. us about some of your stewardship activities that you guys are working on right now. Well, our, uh, do you have well, regular you know, events it, it, or how do you, we, what kind we, of things do you do? We, yeah. I, I kind of hesitate there just because of what we're going through now. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah exactly. Cleanups and events. Yeah. Um, so that what we do have on the calendar and we'll, we'll see what comes of it, but in, in early June, and we've done this for the past two years in, in collaboration with, um, Trout Unlimited and Nature Conservancy, who, who spearhead the majority of the sponsorship. We just kind of do the behind the scenes logistics, you know, mm-hmm. of networking a lot the of people, people out. from Patagonia are there as well. Right. 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 Um, we, we'll, we, so we, we harbor up a nice little river cleanup on the Eastern River. So after high water events, all the debris that washes in from down or washes out from downtown, um, we'll go out and pick up, you know. And then unfortunately, I have to say, when we do have a bit of a, um, you know, a transient population, a homeless population that either lives on or close to the river and during yeah. high water, their stuff gets swept away, you yeah. know, in, in yeah. certain sections of downtown. And that all goes down, you know, to, you know, the very first, you know, nice sections <laughs> right. of the rehabilitated eastern right. section. So we, we commit our time every year to, to make something out of that, make it, try to make a community event where, um, you know, we try to get everyone even outside of the fly fishing industry just to show the relevance and importance of yeah of of the Truckee River. You know, and well, in some of those areas, it's outside. a beautiful stream when you get down there to the eastern section out there east of Truckee. It's gorgeous. Well, yeah, absolutely, and th- and that's and that's something we like to share with people too. I mean, just like you know, just just a little you know nod to the Nature Conservancy. They've done tremendous work down there, and, and when you get down on that restored river, I mean, it's you're like in a different world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you really are. And once people get down there, they're like, wow, I didn't know about this. I'm going to bring my family back. Yeah. You know, just come on a hike, go for a hike, hey, go for a picnic. Exactly. Yeah. You got it. You got it. And, you know, it's just a great piece of outdoors. And, yeah. Yeah. So we like to, you know, expose people to that. And, you know, we try to get local vendors, you know, to give out, you know, food. And last year we had food and beer and sodas, all freebies at the end of the, the thing. So everyone gets rewarded. And oh, cool. They go home. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And that, the, second, the second part of the stewardship is, the people we have on the podcast, they're selected for um, what they do in the business community, what mm. they do to promote the outdoors, to connect people to it. We, Our very first guest, um, Eric, he's the general manager of Whitney Peak, which to us uh, represents the, a new attitude of the area, more focused on outdoor activity as opposed to the old, you know, 70s and 80s where it was Gaming, you know, and gaming. Gaming, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, and that's still that's still a relevant industry, but you know, yeah. there's there's more to this area than that now. Really yeah, exactly. Is. Yeah, a lot. You more, know, yeah, yeah. And 12, I don't 12% think percent of Reno. And Reno doesn't get as many trade shows as, as it used to get, does it? Uh, you know, it it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it's off and on. We we've had the luxury of having some pretty big ones. I mean, recently we had um, what is that? The um, sheep show. Well, yeah, we have the sheep show, but it was the fisheries. Uh, it was two big fishery organizations. Oh, interesting. Uh, uh-huh. They came in, and, and it was a worldwide conference came in, which is pretty cool for That's us. That's great. You know, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, well, I remember you know, the outdoor it's, it's retailer show. Outdoor retailer show used to be in Reno for many years. We used to go up there twice a year. It was great. Well, and we are losing traffic to, to Vegas just because it's great that the shows are here, but they also, um, you know, they grow and such size that you right. know, our convention to, center yeah. and, gotta go just somewhere can't handle yeah. it. You know, they just out, they just outgrow it. Yeah, well, that's know? what happened to the outdoor is, show. They had to go to Salt Lake. Yeah, yeah. So how nice. often do you guys get the fish? <laughs> Weekly? Pretty often. <laughs> yeah. Daily? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's between weekly and daily. Nice. It's between weekly and daily. That's cool. Yeah. 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 So Good it's always you. little shots, you know, where sure. it's like yeah. we, we don't, we, we just, don't always have that luxury of going, Hey, let's spend a whole day on the river. And mm-hmm. sometimes I don't think I would even really enjoy that unless it was just, you know, 
the best conditions, you know. And, well, it kicks you know, your butt. I don't, know, I don't I'm an old guy. It kicks um, my butt all day on the river and I'm wiped out. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, 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 it's rough. We get it. <laughs> Is, <laughs> the, the river literally, yeah. the, the river runs right through uh, the town of Reno. Yeah, exactly. So wherever yeah. you are, you're close to the river. Right. Yeah, and right. you could have a meeting and be right there on the river. Sometimes you could bring a client on the river. And then at night after work, especially now that it's lighter and longer, you just head to the river. I, I kind of have to do my check-in at home with the family, make sure there's nothing happening there uh, where I need to be. My kids are teenagers now, so cool. it's me begging them to spend time with me as opposed to when they were little. Right, so right. I'm, <laughs> I'm finding I have more freedom than I used right. to have. And does anybody do drift trips on the river? Do you have drift boats? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I didn't realize yeah, that. Yeah, there's, okay. it, it's, 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 not, it's not as popular um, as it is in other areas in the West, but it's, I won't say it's growing in popularity, but um, we, have, we have one to two dedicated guys, mm -hmm. uh, one for sure that, mm -hmm. that's always on the Eastern um, in his boat during, you know, winter and, and whatnot, colder months. Oh, wow, cool. Um, and... You know, that that's something that we've been exploring as well is about, you know, getting, um, you know, more boats, you know, or even getting our own boat on the water because there's a lot of, there's a lot of passable navigable water that just has been overlooked you yeah, know, for yeah, many years. Yeah. That's very cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, so it's, a, it's, it's, it's a, probably the best way to approach the Truckee, but we can't well, it's the best, it's it. really the best way to, approach, yeah, it's the best way to approach any river. I mean, if you can get in a boat, it's, yeah. you just have so much access and. You know, you can get a nice drift in front of the fish from a long way away so they're not spooked. And there's a bunch of reasons, yeah. A lot of guys are doing that yeah. down here on the lower Owens. Um, so what's a typical day like on the Truckee? What's the, what's the fly? What, uh, what's, the, what's the setup? Yeah. It, it changes. It's really sure. interesting. Yeah. It, it keeps you on your game. You will, like, for example, last Friday and Saturday, I, two nights in a row I caught both nights, two fish, the biggest I'd ever caught back to back. Wow. In the last two times I've been to the same spot this week, same time, I haven't even had a bite <laughs> on the same. <laughs> what, different bugs, yeah. bra different bugs going off probably. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you shake it up a little bit, but. So, um, so here, here's a little, here's a little thing about the Truckee. So we, we've given it a nickname and this describes it very well. It's a spinoff uh, from an Ernest Hemingway uh, novel. Okay, it's called the Big Two Hearted, a Big Two Hearted River, and that's that's a book that he allegedly wrote about the Ossible in Michigan. Um, it, he never directly wrote about what river he was actually on, so who knows? So the spinoff from that is instead of the Big Two Hearted, we call it the Big Two Face River, because <laughs> like Ben said. The big one day, same conditions, you know, you could have back to back days, same condition, same thing happening. And one day is just great on fire. You just, you feel like a pro. And the next day you're just like, you know, it's, it's a completely different story. Right. I mean, <laughs> that can be true of any river. There's no nice words for it. Yeah. You look at the bugs, you look at what's in the water. Yeah. And yeah. many times you see the exact same thing you saw the day before. Right. And that, that's what keeps it exciting also. Yeah, yeah. And you never right. know. It's funny that at least it's hard to tell why the fish aren't active, whether they're down for the temperature of the water, the pressure, who knows? They're, they, you know, right. you weren't there yeah. for the hatch yesterday where they just gorged, so they're not hungry. I mean, it's interesting. Could be a million different things, so... Oh, what? yeah, and this river breaks this river breaks all the rules, Rick. It's it's <laughs> the, the dry fly fishing on this is is few and far between. When it happens, it's great, but uh -huh. it's just it's an anomaly. Yeah. And then those days that are supposed to be great, you know, like during the hatches and all that type of stuff, they don't care. They don't care what the hatch is, they don't care what the bug is, because that's not what they're eating. Yeah. It's yeah. ridiculous. Everything is backwards on this river. So that's that's something I've become accustomed to. Like Interesting. oh, oh, it's a blue wing olive hatch, oh they'll throw on a crayfish. <laughs> You're like, what? Trust me. <laughs> yeah, interesting. We're going to take a little break and give some love to our episode sponsor, Creative Live. We'll be right back. Level up your creative game for free today with Creative Live and their amazing selection of live and on-air classes. With over 1,500 curated classes in photography and video, money and life, craft and maker, art and design, and music and audio, 
there is something for everyone. Watch their on-air broadcast for free or buy a class and own the content for life. Go to theoutdoorbizpodcast.com slash creative live and start building creative skills from the world's top experts today. Now back to the show. So tell me about an epic day. What's an epic day on the trucky like? <laughs> uh, have you had I guess one? An example. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I guess I have. I mean, I mean, compared to other rivers, it'd probably be a a mediocre day. But you know, um, you know, as we say here, if you can get if you get two fish in your net, you know, respectable size, you know, and, you know, twelve to sixteen inches or bigger, you had a great day. Wow. You know, okay. It's, it's yeah. Quality. It's, it's it's a quality over quantity river, but. With that being said, I mean, Ben and I have both had days where, you know, we're, we're, we creep up. I mean, what's the biggest day you've had here, number-wise? Uh, I think six. Six. So, see what and I mean. And that was in about an hour and a half. Yeah. Wow. And um, I've, I've probably had, and there's other guys that have done better. And now, now stalkers don't count. All right. Got so. you. Yeah, yeah, got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so best, best wild fish day, yeah. um, uh, when I'm probably in the 10 to 12 range. Wow. You know, yeah. Um, and and that's and when you get to that range, I mean, you have a bunch of lost fish and stuff too. But that's sure that that's a respectable day. On that's the a good day. That's something a good day on any river. I take that on any river. Yeah, yeah, that's a good day. Yeah. Something else about what makes it epic is, you know, any time that you're on the river here, you've got the Sierra Nevada, right, right there on the side. You've right. Got the water flowing, the rock. You're. It's a beautiful location. Um, it's you're you're really monitoring everything around you. It just regardless of if you get fish or not, it's just an incredible experience every time. You just feel so alive. Um, yeah, we're fortunate here in Bishop. Doing. We have the same thing. You know, the Eastern Sierra just staring right at you, no matter where you go. It's fabulous. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So let's. Yeah. Uh, you, got, you got a little bit more. You have a little bit more grand views there, though, than we do. We have good views. <laughs> you have. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's almost in, it's in your face. You can't get away from it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Humbling. Yeah, yeah. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about the podcast. Where'd the idea for the podcast come from? Oh yeah, well, um, great question. So it's kind of, that was a collaboration with Ben and I. Okay, uh, and you guys are what nine episodes in? Did I see that right? Nine. Yeah. Yeah. Nine. Cool. Um, nine. Yeah, and um, you know we had some steam going. We we we've, we've had a little a little pause here, but you know, we, we're, we we've got at, a lot lined up as well. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, Hey, it's not about we, the numbers. It's, a, it's about the quality of the show. And I think, you know, I've listened to a couple episodes. Yep. You guys are doing a good job. So keep it up. Thank you. We yeah. enjoy it. It's, uh, we feel like we're the ones who benefit. It's, it's uh, fun. And it? yeah, it's fun. To do and love uh, listening to the people we're talking to. Yeah. yeah well, same. We, we got the idea. Like, we're just like, Okay, so basically, you know, there's there's a lot of, you know, there's fly fishing podcasts out there, and I've listened to a ton of them, you know, and they're great because you want to learn. Yeah. You want to under, you want to understand, and, and the, the situation that I personally ran into was, yes, there was a plethora of information. There was a lot of information, but did I comprehend it? Did I understand it? And could <laughs> I apply it? Yeah. I, no. Yeah. No, you know, and then, and then you know, it's like, I, I mean, I could, I could recall. And it's funny we're sitting here next to the eighty because I remember I listened to these podcasts going up the eighty, going into trucky and stuff, and I, I'd be sitting there fiercely like trying to take notes while I'm driving. Like, what was that called? <laughs> you know, a, a tungsten beadhead peasant tactical hook wing gig tail, and you're like, right. what? You're writing this down. Then you go in the local fly shop. Mean? Yeah, and you go in the local fly shop. You have this. And they're like, huh? what are you talking about? Yeah, you know. Right. Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, now I'm an idiot, you know. Yeah. And then <laughs> it's the next day, by the way. So whatever that was, it's right. working anyway. Yeah, so, right, right. So we, yeah, so we decided, like, okay, let's, have, you know, a podcast would be great, but how do we, how do we make it appeal to a broad audience? You know, how do we tie in, you know, the fly fishing thing, attract fly fishermen, um, and at the same time, maybe get that person to listen that has, doesn't even fly fish you know they just want to know something about the community or mm -hmm. hear a good story and that's that's kind of our focus it's like we like to get to know the guest uh have the guests talk about themselves and then we talk about really the number one thing that everyone can really center around is food yeah you know and <laughs> and 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 at the same time we'll correlate that with whatever business that our guest is in whether it's a fly fishing business or a local business we like mm -hmm. to try to promote that and and center around the community because i mean you know, they, they, 
both, both of these elements coexist with each other, the fly fishing, the community, the food, the business, it's all, all tied in together. Right. And that's kind of like, we like to put out there and just make a overall enjoyable podcast. And we, we've had a technical one or two, but we try to steer away from it when we can. Yeah. Yeah. And the so, key piece for us is a question that says, you know, if you're a regular person, you're here in the area, you pass by the beautiful Truckee, you see the mountains, how do you access it? What what can you do to get connected and yep. to get on the river as opposed to that, like Nico said, that extreme technicality? Because we have a lot of talent out of here and there's a lot of podcasts that speak to that side of it. But we really wanted to have our listeners get more out of their life, you know, really connect and live their life to the fullest and give them a resource of how to do that, how to engage. That's yeah, very cool. Yeah. And so the name Burritos, Breaks, and Flies, I got the Burritos and Flies part now. Where's the, is the Breaks an ode to your surfing background, Ben? Yeah. So one thing about the Trekkie and fun fact is there's two parts. The first one is fly fishing and surfing, believe it or not, they go together. I've, I've river surfed. I've actually, we watched the wind, me and my river surfing friends, yep. closely. And when it blows on the lake, it creates waves. And so Surfline will have posts on, you know, some of the um, social media about the waves. And, and they're real. Right. But speaking to an avid surfer from the ocean, it's usually garbage. But it's a novelty <laughs> because you're on, like, you're on a lake. Exactly, right exactly. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, it has to do with the similarity between, or that that itch that's satisfied between surfing and fly fishing. And also, we do plan to get more into river surfing, especially uh, as the spring melt-off happens. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's something here. We have a, actually a water feature that's just a river surfing wave right in downtown Reno. Oh, cool. And then another one spark. So there's and a lot of people kayak fishing. that river, right? And a lot of people kayak yeah. that river. And then there's also, I didn't realize, but that's a big industry is river surfing globally right now. Yeah. yeah. So it's a piece, it's a piece of it. I yeah. had a guy on yeah, the show a few episodes <laughs> back who has a stand up paddleboard company and he kind of started his whole business around creating whitewater parks on rivers. And they do a lot of stand up paddleboard surfing on these, in these rivers, on these waves. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, we uh, have some contacts, um, McLaughlin Whitewater Park, and we, you know, one of my favorite surfers, Jerry Garcia, lives in yep. Bend, Oregon, yep. so I'll watch him on the van, Weird Waves, and gotcha. so yep. yeah, it's just another piece of engaging with what's around you, basically. Yeah. And so this is yeah. your first podcast, how'd you guys learn the craft of podcasting? It's not, it's <laughs> not, we just... It's not difficult, but it's yeah. not easy either. No. Well, I mean, so, I mean, to, to keep it simple, our first podcast, we just used this podcast platform and we recorded the first two actually straight off the cell phone. And, 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 and I mean, like just set the phone on the table nice, <laughs> and, 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 and got the, the quietest environment that we could, you yeah. know, and just had to play around with it. And, and then it, it, by the third one, the one, two, third one, we actually, then we had microphones. We had two boom microphones and then, uh, uh getting all professional. Scarlet. Yeah. Yeah. We got a Scarlet. Yeah. And then, and then it just kind of progressed. And then each time then, then we got, you know, I, I did like two or three episodes, like on like some free Adobe software. And that was like so complicated that I found this other one. And, I think it costs us like a whopping 20 bucks to edit, you know, sound <laughs> stuff. And then, and then we're like, dude, we're in this cheap, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It is pretty inexpensive to get started. Equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, we're poaching this equipment, Rick. We're going, we're on the cheap here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, what else makes it different is we are um, on location podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where we are, what that environment is. And, yeah. You know, we've done podcasts right next to Truckee. We've done it in an old 150 year old ranch house that a fire was lit that hadn't been lit in 12 years. And it's fun to be active 
and on the go and you kind of get a piece of yeah i love that yeah i don't i don't do many on locations but my setup allows me to be able to do it anywhere which i think is great for a bunch of reasons i mean it's compact so it doesn't take up a bunch of space in the house but yeah being in the environment is awesome i'd love to take my show on the road someday that's my dream but uh that's pretty fun well well, we like we like our guests to be comfortable you know sure yeah you know like we like to be in there like what's what's you know, what's conducive to them. Yeah. If you can get in their environment, yeah, it relaxes them. Yeah. 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 That's cool. So, uh, the name burritos, do you have a favorite burrito place? (laughs) I'll let Ben start on that one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's it's kind of funny because, um, I, I switched to a plant-based diet. Okay. Do you have a sense? You have a censorship button. Can you? Yeah. That out? It's so funny. <laughs> no, you know what's funny? I was in uh, I was in Las Vegas a couple of weeks ago, and um, the guy I was hanging out with, we went to dinner, and it was a, a vegan. It was tacos, and I forget what the name of it was. But that's good. Some tacos, and we didn't realize walking in the door that it was all huh. vegan, and it was damn good. I was surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and for me, it's like I am not against meat eaters or meat, nor do I claim that vegan can taste as good as meat <laughs> but i just feel good so we sure. started this and what what's exciting is you know one of our um guests described their favorite we asked the guest what's their favorite burrito and one of them said he grew up in new mexico the land of enchantment mm-hmm. yeah they would go elk hunting and they had this special New Mexican hot salsa that they'd put on this elk meat in this corn tortilla and mm. roast it over a fire right out there in the outdoors. And sounds great. You know what? What are some of your favorites, Jaco? Yeah, that that was one of them. I mean, the way he described that, and then uh, I, I have to say, you know, all, all of our guests have had had great burritos, but I, I would I would say they still are paling in comparison to um, like we try to set a standard. <laughs> on the burrito we we really do and so we have a rating scale we do have a rating scale and, and this is where it originates from ben and i are both we were born and raised in southern california yeah um, man, burritos a everywhere. Lot of, you know in yeah. fontana yeah, that's those, right oh my god we had some great burrito places in fontana right and and you have you have two two major types you know burritos but one weighs heavier than another and that's your ba style meaning that yep. it, it's you know it's 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 protein laden, right? So if, if, if it's a carnitas burrito, it's all carnitas. <laughs> and then you got cilantro and onions and maybe some sauce and that's it. You right, know, so that's, right. that's what I'm accustomed to. And then, you know, and, and there's certain things we look for, like on the tortilla and Ben will describe this. We look for, <laughs> we have a Jurassic park scale that yeah. we use and okay. Ben will describe that for, uh, for the tortilla. Yeah. yeah. We, Go ahead. We spend a, a scary amount of time brainstorming and laughing on what we call the great burrito, but, one of them comes from that scene where they realize that the wire has, has broken open in Jurassic Park one, <laughs> and they're in the car looking at their water, yeah. and then you you see the little pulsars of water, the boom, 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 boom. <laughs> So we say, does your burrito, if the, the T-Rex was coming, would you see it in the grease in your burrito? And if you would, that's a plus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah that's, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's just one of them. Some of them get slightly, I wouldn't say inappropriate, but they get, you think on them and you're like, Oh wow, that's rough. But one of our favorites too, on top of that is the Google rating. If there is on the Google or the Yelp rating or, or whatever it is, or your trip advisor, um, a lot of ratings, lower star ratings, lots of food poisoning. Oh, I didn't feel well the next day. That's our go-to. You've got to have at least one complaint of legitimate food poisoning to be considered a real burrito. I love it. (laughs) So really greasy places, back back wall places. Yeah, it's interesting. Really really greasy. And the only other requirement, really, I mean, we go down a list is is, is the horchata. You know, if they have, they have like, the horse shot the machine. Jar. Yeah, well, if you have the machine, they're legit. But Ben did bring up bring up the, the jar. If they have the jar, you next level. Yeah, yeah, you're at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's very cool. That's awesome. <laughs> so you don't have a yeah. favorite place, I guess. You just like a handful of them. Um, well, up here in Reno, like there's a lot of great burrito places, but it, I, I I am sticking. There's a chain joint out here. They're out of Vegas, and they got one location up here. It's Roberto's. 
Mm, yeah, and yeah. They, you you know. Yeah, yeah Roberto's follow, in San Diego was one of the go tos. Exactly. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. That, after I, after I grew up in Fontana, I went down to San Diego, so I got to experience all the great Mexican food down there. It's awesome. Well, well, there's the Roberto's, and then the Iberto's, and the Albertos, yep. and they all have the same logo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Alberto, <laughs> and, but it's all the same stuff. You know? Yeah. No, mine, mine actually is Pedro's Tacos. Uh, growing up in Southern California, they're down there. Yeah. Um, especially if you surf a break called Trussels, which is a world class. Yep. Yeah. Yep. There's. It's customary to go by Pedro's after, so. Yeah, I don't remember. My my dad worked at the steel mill in Fontana, and there was a place out by the mill. I don't remember the name of it, but it had great burritos, and they tasted fabulous. But the problem was they were so hot, they'd burn your lips off. And I could, like, eat half of one and then have to (laughs) set it down. But, man, they were good. I don't remember the name of it, but it was fabulous, yeah. So how about I have to give a – Go ahead, sorry. I was going to say – I was going to say locally, I, we have to throw this out there up, up above you in June Lake. Um, I think there's June Lake Brewing or something. Yeah. They have there's a trailer out there. Was it Ohana? Oh Ohana yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't had one Ohana of those, but I've seen that guy. Yeah, burrito. Okay, oh, burrito. Yeah. Ohana burrito. Yeah, it's hands down. I mean, absolutely best burrito in the Sierra. Wow. They, okay. Well, I got to go check that out then. Oh man, they they merge Kahlua pork into that Jurassic Park burrito shell. Wow. And Ben actually did make it by there one time, but they were closed. They closed in the winter, yeah. Which Mm. is a bummer, but it's just an experience. It's just like you're like this, everything's wrong about it. An Hawaiian (laughs) burrito at Green Lake. That's why I've never, I've seen it, but I'm like, ah, that doesn't sound very good. You know, I got to check it out now. Oh, uh, no. I'll add that to the list. Maybe I have to get uh, them on the show. Prepare yourself. You may want somebody to drive you home because (laughs) you're going to have... (laughs) <laughs> gotcha. really cool, food you coma all right yeah. sounds good how about uh out of your nine episodes do you have a favorite oh you know i've got pieces um i've got favorite pieces of all of them yeah I mean, they've, they've they've all been great you know it's like i think the only way i could really base them like you know on on the technical side it's like each one gets a little bit better, you know, yeah, like yeah. production value and sure. stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, it, it's hard to put it, put them in order as, you know, best or worst, because I, I mean, honestly, everyone brings something different to the table on the podcast. Yep, and, I agree. Yep. you know, it's, 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 yeah, they, they've all been really great. Um, what, one of my favorite stories is a podcast with Brandon Beck. He okay. is, he was a, a captain of a boat in Alaska. And he tells the story of him starting out. Well, two stories. One is he got caught inside in a storm Oof. and a wave blew out every window in his cabin. Wow. Front, back, blew open the back door off the hinge. All I saw when he was telling that story was George Clooney. <laughs> in the perfect storm yeah you know? right yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah it was that i mean it was an intense story that is a good one ben. and then that, that the second intense. one of that was he had filled up he'd got such a catch that he was literally the edges of his boat were about a foot off the water wow. but it was dead glass so he made it all the way in but another boat had done the same thing and a boat had gone by that boat and unfortunately and tragically that boat um, just the smallest weight capsized it. Oh my goodness! Almost wow. Fifteen, fifteen. We said about fifteen thousand pounds in salmon, which has been oh, basically man. a year. A lot of money. Yeah, wow. yeah. God, boop, flop. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it was the Finding Nemo scene. They were throwing mm. each other. <laughs> <in the flip-flip. laughs> yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as as we move in to wrap up here, do you have any suggestions or advice for folks wanting to get into the outdoor fly fishing biz or get into get into podcasting specifically? Yeah, you know, I think um, as as Ben and I are learning, podcasting is what such a great way to reach out, you know, to people to have have a conversation or stimulate a conversation and yep. and um, and highlight things that otherwise may not be highlighted in your community or you know your your sport of choice or your activity of choice. And I think, you know, I guess advice for anybody wanting to get into it. Um, this makes sense. Don't think too much about it. Just be like, what focus on the passion that you think others would enjoy. Mm-hmm. 
and talk about it. You know, try, don't, don't, you know, we're not, we're not journalists, you know, we're not. Yeah. That's great know. advice. I think, I think people hesitate because you know, they overthink it. Just jump in, just start talking. Yeah. Right. We all because, have a story to tell. You know, there's, yeah. And you know, it's hard to listen to a constructive conversation where it's like, you know, there's one thing, I mean, to have things formulated for the guests, you know, like, Hey, you know, this is what I want to go over, but it's just like, if it's just this strict regimen, you know, everyone's uncomfortable. It's weird. It's awkward. Yeah, 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 it's just yeah. like, ugh, you know, I mean, that's, that's everyday life at work and stuff. Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Relax a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so, do you guys have any yeah, favorite podcasts? Do you listen to other uh, podcasts a lot? One, my, my, me personally, I mean, there's this one, um, what's it called? Outdoor biz podcast. <laughs> oh, that's what we're on. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great one. Thank it's you. Thank one. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, you, I've got a couple. I, you know, you do? What are they? Well, one of them is Ear Hustle. It's a podcast uh, made by prisoners in prison. What was the name of it? And that's kind of where Ear Hustle. And it's uh, about life changing stories. There is. Um, the sound of the chains of the prison door shutting wow. and that kind of gave me the idea of being on location, but also just trying to get a uh, meaning out of it. And then the second one I like is if life were perfect, as, as much as I hate to admit it, it's my sister and brother-in-law's podcast about <laughs> changing your life and getting everything in order. So, oh, cool. but I just, I'm one of their biggest fans. So I, I really like that. Cool. Uh, we'll link to that in show notes. Yeah. 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 And I think I would say that, um, ones that I used to listen to a lot on the fly fishing side, I listened to, you know, Tom Rosenbauer a lot on his Orvis podcast. Yep. I learned, yep. I, I, I like his approach, you know, it was just no nonsense. And it's like, you know, yeah, it's a good one. I love that he didn't have an answer for everything. Everyone's like, Tom, the expert. And he's like, well, yeah, he's an expert, <laughs> but he'd be like, yeah, man, I don't even know what you're talking about. You know? <laughs> right. right. And I, 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 I appreciate that. And, and the other one, um, and I had been listening to a couple was he's out of the East coast too, is Rob, uh, Rob Snow White, mm-hmm. the, uh, fly fishing consultant. He's a guy on um, the Potomac and he just does a really casual, like fun podcast. And he had a really, this one guest is really great. Uh, Richard Franklin, an old time photographer, fly fisher. And this, this guy, had, awesome. his stories, Rick were this Richard Franklin gentleman. His stories were just so amazing. Like mm. he, he talked about, discovering fly fishing and you know he knew about it on the east coast but how he discovered montana in the 60s how, how about the book they received and then refound after oh the, yeah yeah he he found some a uh, piece of fly fishing history mega history wow uh from england and yeah it's 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 worth a listen but he's got a good one that and that kind of gave us the foundation for what was the name of that one again it's, sorry it's it's the fly fishing consultant okay cool by rob snow white We'll yeah. link to that in the show notes. He, yeah, yeah, he's he's a he's a solid guy. He's, cool. I mean, and, and the nice thing is he painted pictures out there, like the East Coast. I have no clue, yeah, of right. where he's at. Right. But he'll be like, "Oh, I'm driving down this road, and oh, there's a cigar shop here, and well, he's sponsoring my show because he gave me a cigar." You know, you're like, <laughs> "Cool," you know. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. So do you? Uh, yeah. Do you guys have a favorite outdoor gear purchase under a hundred dollars? A little piece of Ooh. fly fishing equipment or uh, camping uh, equipment? Yeah, I've, I've got one. What's yours? Um, I've actually got two. Okay. The first one is way under $100. <laughs> <laughs> I just got it to Sportsman's Warehouse. It's at any fly fishing place. But it's a magnetic clip that clips your net to your to your mm. vest or, oh, yeah, or yeah. to whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And it's retractable. It, changed, it just made life. So easy to pull the net right off, scoop the fish, and clip it back on with just that clasp. And my second one is um, a, a pair of uh, surfing booties. Yeah, oh, that's a good one. Yeah. In Southern California, it didn't quite get cold enough to where I needed booties. I kind of like the board feel of bare feet and yeah. ocean wave. But surfing, uh, river surfing, and the trucky, <laughs> and then obviously when you surf Lake Tahoe got to have booties so yeah. i just have found that that it's so worth it to have a good pair and um i like that's good yeah we'll link to those in the show notes yeah nico you got one yeah and this one's going to be out of left field because it, it it applies to many things but i discovered it last summer uh thanks to ben and it all has to do with 
protecting yourself from the sun. It was my Quicksilver, <laughs> like, thatched palm, like, lifeguard hat. <laughs> like, gotcha. it's got a, it, it's awesome. Like, it, it protects you from the sun. It keeps your head cool. It's like 20 <laughs> bucks, you yeah, know. Yeah. It, it, you know, and you just every day, like you go out fishing in the summer, I dunk it in the river, get it wet, put it on my head, you know, just to keep moisture in it. And Perfect, it, uh, yep. and he works in rainstorms, snowstorms. There's a lot of wind here in a, yeah, in a I, pool, I but, have a round brim hat. It's like a sign yeah. from Costco. And, um, it's just having the round brim in your, in your quiver per se. Yeah. You, know, you gotta have that. Yeah. Car. yeah. Gotta have so that. many hot days where it's like, I don't have anything to prove. I'm yeah. going to wear a round yeah. brim. Well, no, the yeah, sun, yeah, the sun just beats you to death. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and, that, and that Quicksilver hat has some of the best reviews on it that I've ever seen. Cool. Like, basically well, like saying, you put it on, you can feel the, 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 the blood of Greek gods flowing through you. And stuff, so, yeah. <laughs> we'll link to that. <laughs> Sorry, in the show too. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to say to our listeners or ask of our listeners? Well, I just would like to say that uh, thank you for listening to your podcast because um, I think it's incredible that people are in this industry connecting people to the outdoors. I feel like it, it really changes lives, and I'd like to challenge everybody to do more to get outdoors. Uh, cool. You've got a passion. Get out there, do it, and most importantly, bring somebody else along who's been interested. I like it. And that camaraderie will, I think, make it even that much more. I like yeah. It. And I, I think, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I want to say that, um, I want to personally thank you, Rick, for you've been, um, yeah. a little, a, a bit of a coach, you know, I reached out to you, <laughs> you know, when we're kind of halfway through, you know, when we're on episode nine and we're about to cut episode 10 with you, you know, here shortly, but it's going to be, uh, um, and you were doing some international, uh, Scotland or something, weren't yes. you? Yeah. And, and yeah. that, that, the big notch you thank you for that so uh, how about this if, if, if you're listening to this podcast and you're thinking about doing a podcast or even you know an effective way to to reach out to an audience even if it's not a podcast rick really has a great uh, you know a lot of experience and and, and you know a lot of trial and tribulation um <laughs> yep. it, it comes in handy i mean it's, it's he, he, you know and the thing is you put it out there you're like here it's on my website the do's and don'ts use this use this yeah things yeah. that you never think of or you look over and um yeah no thanks for that i think yeah. that's it's awesome yeah so well, that, hell, i think it's like, like fishing right you want to you want to help those that come after you because you know it's yeah it, we got someone has to teach us along the way so and where can people find you guys if they want a, a website bearfishalliance.com is yeah. that uh, the right yeah that's 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 the easiest way. So uh, bearfishalliance dot com, and then you go on there, and it, it's you want to know something about the Truckee River? It's there's a lot. All there. the things it's, are there. There's a lot there. Around. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll link to that in the show notes too. Well, guys, it's been great. Yeah, no, I for, appreciate for, the time. Uh, yeah, thank you. I appreciate you having us on. Yeah, yeah thank cool. you so much. And we'll we'll get on the river one of these days. We will. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Look forward to it, man. All right. Take it easy. <laughs> thank you for listening. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, be sure and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast. Be sure and go to the outdoorbizpodcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Have a great week and be sure to get outside. <laughs>